Good evening, everyone. My name is Jose Ariano, and um, I'm so happy to be here with you all tonight. It's a very special event that is dear to my heart because together we get to celebrate life, kinship, and community with one another. See, because a kid like me growing up, my future seemed unlikely. I got jumped into my neighborhood when I was 12, the summer before junior high. I didn't have a curfew growing up because my mom was from the hood and my house was the hangout spot. I never wanted to be from the hood when I was growing up because at a young age, I was really into school and marching band. I played the trumpet and I was in the gate program. I love school. I love school so much because I hated being home. I had an older cousin that was like a brother to me and we promised each other that we would never be from the hood. And out of nowhere, he got jumped in. We never talked about it and I didn't know why. He never explained himself to me. And by this time, my mom, she, was, she began to run the streets and uh, my cousin's gone, he's with the homies and it was just kind of me by myself. And uh, I used to have this friend and I would always be over his house. And I used to stay out of his house real late so his mom would always have to ask me to leave. And, um, and I remember one night, I walked down to my friend's house and I knocked at the door and they looked through the people but they didn't answer the door. And so they had a side window and I go to the side window and I, and I, I knock at the window and they turn the living room light off. And uh, you know, I felt hurt. I felt, like, I felt like they didn't want me there. And uh, you know, I knew that when I got home, I knew that there was, there was not gonna be anybody at home. So I remember walking to the top of the hill I get to the top of the hill, and my cousin and my older homeboy were there, and they go, um, what's up? Why you look so sad, homie? Did your dog die or something? <laughs> and I go, you know, no, nah, I'm not sad. I'm all right. And uh, they asked me, they said, do you want to get jumped into the hood? And I said, uh, yeah, I'll get jumped in. So we walked across the street to my cousin's house, and uh, they jumped me. And after they jumped me, my cousin came down with a pair of pants and he gave me a pair of pants. And it was the first time that anybody had ever done something so special for me. That had ever given me something of so much importance, like a pair of pants. Because when I was growing up, clothes, were, they were hard to come by. And uh, he, gave me the, he gave me those pants and I felt like, man, I felt like somebody cares about me, you know. And even though those pants were three times my size, I wore those pants every day, every day for like a month and a half. And I cherish those pants. That decision would change the course of my life. Eight months later, my cousin was murdered. And I didn't understand what I was going through at the time. I felt empty inside, I felt hopeless. You know, my mom, she, by this time, she was already on drugs. She was messing up. My cousin had just passed away and this was, a, this was like a brother to me, you know. This was the kid that I played toys with and we used to play army man together and uh, you know and, and my cousin was murdered and I didn't understand what I was feeling inside I began to feel hopeless and uh, you know we couldn't pay our bills electricity began to get turned off and we were always uh, we always had to move and I realized you know that nobody was coming to save us I started selling drugs and eventually went to juvenile hall started to become bitter inside and began to hate my own life I started feeling very resentful with my mother because I wasn't understanding that she was dealing with a powerful drug addiction. I started to believe that I did not care if I lived or died. I would see my mom in the streets or homies would tell me, hey dog, your mom's over here getting high. And I would say, I don't have a mother. I resented everything. Then on my last trip to prison, I got word that my mother had passed away. I felt like my world was crushed. Everything I had suppressed for so long was coming to the surface and all I wanted was my mom. I began to think about my life and it hurt so much to look at the rubble that my life had become. But I remember when I was in prison, I remember hearing about this priest from Boyle Heights and the homie from East LA would talk about this priest. He would be like, yeah, man, there's this priest, Father Greg, you know, he put me in school and got me enrolled in school and he bought me a backpack and I was like, man, I never seen a priest like that. <laughs> But those stories, they stood with me. Those stories stood with me. And I was curious, you know. I was curious to find out if there was somebody really like that. And he told me, look, I promise you, when you get out, if you want to change your life, find Father Greg, find Homeboy Industries. So when I got out, 
uh, I remember finding the number to homeboys, and I called down there. I'm fresh out of prison, like three days out of prison. I called down there, and a homie named Eddie answers the phone. He says, hey, this is Eddie with Homeboy Industries. How can I help you? I said, I'm looking for a job. Are you guys hiring? He said, well, let me ask you a few questions. I said, all right. He goes, you ever been locked up before? And I'm like, yeah, I just got out. And he goes, um, all right, so are you currently on probation or parole? I'm like, yeah, I'm on parole. I'm on high control right now. He goes, okay, what about visible tattoos? Do you have any visible tattoos? I look at myself, I'm like, damn, I'm all tatted up. I'm about, <laughs> about to hang the phone up. And I go, uh, yeah, homie, I'm, I'm all tatted up. And he goes, yeah, well, we'll give you a job then. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't believe that this dude was serious. I'm like, are you serious? Are you playing with me? He goes, no, we'll give you a job. Come today, we'll give you a job. You know, we'll hire you here at Homeboy Industries. And um, I remember when I arrived at Homeboys, I get to Homeboys, right? And I look in there, I said, damn, there's a lot of gang members here. <laughs> I go, well, maybe this ain't the place for me, you know? <laughs> but I get, I get through the doors, and I'm filling out my intake form, and uh, there's this homie, and maybe some of you have seen him before. His name is Mario. And he's, yeah. <laughs> And so Mario got the most tattoos in the whole entire world. <laughs> Mario got tattoos on his eyelids, you know? And so I'm sitting in the lobby, and I notice him notice me. And I'm fresh out of prison, so I got PTSD. I got all kinds of stuff going on. So I'm sitting in the lobby. I notice this guy notice me, and he begins to walk towards me. And so I begin to think the worst. And my, as, he walk, as he gets closer, my heart begins to race. And I'm like, man, here we go, you know? Mario gets up to me and he stops and he reaches out his hands and he goes, I've never seen you before. Are you thirsty? Do you want some water or something to drink? And I look at him like, what the? <laughs> Imagine that, a gang member from a different gang asking me, asking me if I was thirsty. That was my first impression at Homeboy Industries. I remember when my little brother, he started to work there and um, you know, I had, I had found my little brother after my mom died. My brother was out here. He was, he, he was on his own. And I remember bringing him to Homeboy Industries, and he, and he started to work there. And we, we, used to, we used to share clothes back then. And I was, I was a lot thinner back then, like 50 pounds thinner, right? <laughs> and so if I had these pants on today, my brother would have them on tomorrow. And so people at Homeboy Industries, they would notice stuff like that. They would see us. And uh, I remember one day we come in and the homie Eddie, he, he says, hey, G wants to see you guys, you know? So I look at my brother, I'm like, damn, what do we do, you know? <laughs> we get in there, we sit at his desk and he hands us two Sears cards. He gives us two Sears cards and he says, go buy your guys sell some clothes. And so we leave, you know, we're going down Alameda. And I look over at my little brother and my little, my little brother was in tears. And I remember when we were growing up, I used to tell my brother, like, don't ever cry. You know, don't ever show weakness. And I look over at my brother, and my little brother was in tears, he was crying. And I tell my little brother, I go, what's up, homie, why are you crying? And he looks at me, and goes, why do they care about us right there? Like, why do they care about us? He couldn't understand. But I knew right there, I knew right there in that moment that I wanted to be a part of this place. I knew right there in that moment that I wanted to be a part of Homeboy Industries. And, uh... And I know what that feeling is now. That feeling was hope. You know, they had, they had begun to give us hope. We had begun to realize that there was something else. And I wanted more of it. You know, I wanted more of it. And the beautiful part of my life today is that as a navigator at Homeboy Industries, I get to be the homie that passes out that little bit of hope. I'm, I'm one of the first people that you see when you come through the doors now. You know, I'm there like Mario was for me. I'm there now for other homies when they come through the door. And I realize that I'm worthy. You know, I learned that at Homeboys. And I get to stand with others while they realize that they realize their own worth. You see, at Homeboy Industries, we are blessed with the opportunity, with the space that is created and that it's... It's just so sacred where we get to realize the truth about our lives. You see, and my truth is your truth, and your truth is my truth, and that truth is this, that 
we're all exactly what God had in mind when he created us. And I thank you all. Thank you all so much for being a part of that truth. And thank you for letting me share my story.